Um, Stark Experimental Forest and Range was established in 1940 as a formal research area by the Forest Service. And then uh, in the 1980s, uh, it was really, uh, the focus really intensified with the establishment of a 25,000 acre enclosure for uh, big game. And with that, uh, started a new round of research called the Starkey Project, which focused on a variety of studies related to management of elk, deer, and cattle with all the different land uses that were, of course, controversial then and are still controversial today in many ways, and those related to effects of timber management and civil culture, effects of roads and traffic on roads, um, the effects of management, management of harvesting of older bulls in terms of elk productivity, um, and the potential for competition between elk during cattle. And so one of the findings was during the archery season is the archers that chose to use places like Meadow Creek um, that were unroaded, um, those hunters were substantially more successful, larger percentage of them were more successful than the archers that chose to basically um, stay closer to motorized access. The, the bull elk rifle hunters, um, some of them used places like Meadow Creek but many of them chose to use areas on our northern end of the study area um, that had a large network of roads that were closed to motorized uses. They were accessing those areas on foot or by horseback or with mountain bikes. And those hunters that chose to use those areas also were more successful than the bull elk rifle hunters that chose to uh, spend more time uh, hunting closer to motorized access. Roads that are open to motorized use are avoided by elk, so there's a shift in distribution away from those areas. And with roads that have, um, with increasing traffic rates on roads, that shift away from roads is even stronger. And of course, these are hunted populations of elk, um, but that avoidance occurs spring and summer before hunting seasons. And basically, elk associate humans with hunting, if they're hunted populations, and they associate humans with hunting even during the non-hunting portions of the year, spring and summer. For example, for ATV riding, we were seeing elk responding and running from ATVs at over 2,000 meters from the ATVs. And as those ATVs moved along the routes, elk were running from them. So we saw pretty large shifts in distribution of elk away from those routes during the ATV activities. You can substantially affect the distribution of elk through management of motorized access and roads and the associated human activities. And so if you want to have that opportunity to hunt with a reasonable chance of success for, for example, for elk, um, then one has to really be uh, mindful about how we manage uh, not only motorized access, but how we manage civil culture, thinning, um, timber harvest, all the things that we do that are land use practices on public lands that affect um, success. Basically the bottom line is if you want to manage your harvest in terms of success then manage roads in terms of motorized access. There are many hunters that want the experience of a lot of motorized access that will affect success. Uh, many do not want that motorized access, they want less motorized access so they can get out on foot. Mule deer strongly avoid elk and so as elk move around and make choices on the landscapes, mule deer in turn uh, move away from elk and it was um, epitomized in the research on roads and traffic where we found increasingly strong avoidance by elk to roads with increasing rates of traffic and we found the exact opposite result for mule deer. They were actually more strongly selecting for areas closer to roads with increasing rates of traffic. And uh, the bottom line is we, we found no relationship of mule deer to roads and traffic per se, but that was simply a reflection of mule deer selecting areas that were avoided by elk. One of the major controversies now, uh, mule deer are declining across the west, and so one of the potential hypotheses is that uh, high densities of elk may be contributing to um, that decline and that's a hypothesis it hasn't been tested along with a lot of other habitat reasons um, that may be contributing to mule deer declines. So at Starkey one of the new research projects that we're 
um, starting now is to begin to collect very intensive baseline data on mule deer um, body condition, productivity, nutrition, habitat conditions um, that we haven't collected in the past and do that for three or four years where we have a really good baseline set of data on population status, uh, fawning, survival, um, condition of the does, a variety of different kinds of measures on the health of mule deer currently. And then one of the potential um, things that we've discussed and uh, are be, it's being considered is a major reduction in the density of elk here in our main study area and looking at the response of mule deer to reduced elk numbers. All those things are being accounted for in that research. We're starting a, a lot of new uh, research on uh, bear and cougar to understand their space use here and their effects on both elk and mule deer.